And can, and can I say, this is how unprepared Hawke's Bay was. And Neil Curtin raised this in his interview yesterday. It's, it's an obvious one. He's going, how come TransPower, responsible for delivering electricity, for example, into a really large urban area, and that is Napier, with, what, 60,000 people in, decided to keep their major substation right next door to a flood risk. Um, it was built in, this is the Redcliffe station that you've heard so much about. That is the only, so, and, and, and what happened when that goes away? So you ask yourself of Transpower and also of Unison, which is the Lions company that services Hawke's Bay, you had one job and your job is to provide electricity to this area. Surely you must have anticipated that there could be a natural disaster. I mean, after all, you had the 1931 earthquake, um, which everybody still talks about in Hawke's Bay, even though they didn't live there, everybody's grand grandparent did. You've had major flooding events in that area. How come if you knock out that one substation, you don't have an answer? All right, the, Transpower and Unison don't have a workaround. They didn't say, well, if Redcliffe goes, we'll automatically do this. No. Nope. Nope, that doesn't exist. Um, and then I guess the other question you ask is the obvious one. How come the poor people of the Escobelli didn't know this was coming? Where was the warning system? Where was the warning system? All right. Um, gee, I'd be asking a lot of questions. I mean, of course you'll ask it after you've cleaned up, but there are just some things that immediately from an outside perspective seem to pop up. And joining us on that um, is somebody who's been in the midst of all this. I tried to talk to Deborah yesterday, um, children's author, award-winning children's author, lives in Jervoy Town, um, not very far from Taradol, is Deborah Burnside. Deborah, can you hear me this morning? Hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Great, we, we have connectivity, which is a bit more than your civil defence people have at the moment, unfortunately. Yeah, it is a bit like that. Uh, the background noise is I'm in a truck at the moment because we're trying to get through hosting. So you're, 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 now, you, just to explain, you actually are a, um, you get a waste disposal company, aren't you? Yeah, we do run a waste and recycling company. And just a little bit of background on that, I, I heard you, but for us right now, um, there's one road into Hastings via Clive, and it seems that there's a two hour wait to get through to Hastings. And a lot of those people, bless them, They'll be wanting a hot shower at their aunties or yeah. the internet, but there are service vehicles that need to get through. And, you know, we're not even the most important of service vehicles. We've got a mechanic that's called in. He's got to get over there to service a fire truck. Um, you know, like, so if anyone's out there in that queue, please go home. Like, you're fine at home and medical people need to get to the hospital. Roading people and clean-up people need to get through there. And we ourselves, actually, we, we do need to get through because Hastings City New World can take um, food products. It's coming through from Palmerston, but they can't receive it until all the contaminated food is out of the Achille area, which is what we're heading over to do now. So it's just really important that if you don't actually need to go over there, please stay home. <laughs> So, Deb, um, just to get this right, there's only one way from Napier to Hastings at the moment, and that's around our Toto and through yes. the Clive area. That's right. The yep. expressway that usually links you and Parkaway Road, they're out, are they? They are completely out. Um, it's my understanding, but this is sort of second hand, that because they, the river hasn't gone down enough to check those bridges, they are not comfortable with vehicles going over those bridges and I saw those bridges early hours of Tuesday morning we went and looked ourselves and look that water was flowing at a rate of the Hooker Falls and it was full of trees and logs and obviously that river flows through and down to the Brookfields Bridge which just blew apart like bolts of wood so I, I get it that they you know caution's important but just because that other route is open, I really don't think people should use it if they don't need to. No. If you're not medical, if you're not service, if you're not actually doing something really important, and God love you, your shower might feel important to you, but it's probably not the most important thing, please stay home for a bit longer yet. You know, let, let the service vehicles get through. 
I think probably the other thing would be anxiety, Deb, because there'd be so many people who would be trying to check on particularly elderly relatives and can't. Yes. That would yes. be that would be the other uh, thing driving this. Do you think? That I absolutely. In fact, my son, who's in his twenties, our youngest, he said, "Crikey, wait till tomorrow, Mum. Everyone will be heading over there to be able to get their Vodafone network and their cellular network to to actually do that to find out if everyone's okay mm. because the connectivity." has been just dreadful, absolutely dreadful. Deb, we're hearing this morning um, the evolving nature of this tragedy, um, particularly news media reports, eyewitness reports of people um, seen floating in the, obviously dead, in the floodwaters yeah. through the Esk Valley. Yeah. The question yeah. that I'm asking this morning is, how did something, an event like this, happen so quickly with so little warning to so many people who were in so much danger? Are those questions being asked, you know, just in private conversations at the moment in Hawke's Bay? Oh, private, private and public, honestly. Look, I'll tell you this story and, and you know, this is, this, is family and friend, this is family and friends. So they were stuck in the Esk Valley and the, the male in the family wanted to go and get the family out and he was stopped at Eskview and he said, not only are you not stopping me, I'm getting in that excavator right now and I'm driving it in there and I'm getting my family. Mm. So, 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 who were the authorities? Was um, that the police or traffic or civil defence or what? Um, to be honest, I don't know who stopped him or who was trying to stop him, but there was road cones and things up and they're going, no, no, you can't go through, you can't go through. And he said, I am, mm. and I'm taking that excavator as well. Oh, and well, he did that, and, and he got his family out. Yeah. Because they were waiting for helicopters that were not coming. <laughs> um, well, and that's the next thing. How can something like this happen of such a massive scale and those people, I'm just thinking in the Esk Valley themselves, not be yep. aware? I mean, I, 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 I'm either thinking that this was some sort of sudden phenomena, but as I said, in Otago, we've got warning signals on all of our rivers so that if the warning, you know, that's topped, a whole series of signals automatically goes to everybody, get out. And I just wondered yep. if that... That exists in the Eskers as well and, and the other areas well, for that matter. To the best of my knowledge, because we do do the waste out there for the East Valley Motor Camp, um, uh, 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 Daniel Gale and his lovely wife out there. And I mean, they've been hit with floods in the past and there are warning systems out there. So at the present moment, because I haven't been able to connect them with them, I don't know if those warning systems went off or not, but it would seem that the upcountry, the backcountry rain was so significant that it just it just came through um, just so fast. Yeah, and I mean, I, I was just yeah, I was just thinking, and it could have easily wiped out those very warning signals that you, we were talking about as well. I guess so. Mm. Um, yeah, possibly. Now, the other thing is, I, I talked to Neil Curtin yesterday about this, and he was saying, um, amidst bring, getting people out of Marae Nui, which was then flooding at that time, um, he said to me... Yeah, so he, that came from the... That came from out at the Awatoto end of the river, of where the Brookfield Bridge River comes through, um, to that... Uh, you might have done a bit of fishing there on the... Yeah, that, the mm. south there. So the railway bridge is completely gone. And it's just twisted up like like it's made out of plaster same. And it's, look, all credit to the original engineers of that bridge. That bridge is holding and that's what's allowing people to go through. But a little bit before that area, about 75 metres of stock bank blew out. And that's when the water started flooding that area of Te Awa, Awatoto and, and going into Marae So, And it's still sort of happening, um, but it, it's draining away at the moment. So, yeah. Deb, the other thing that um, obviously will be uh, concerning a lot of, ev well, everybody, will be the lack of electricity that is coming into Napier yeah. as well. Um, yeah. I've heard this morning they're talking about two weeks, which just seems phenomenally long to me. Um, but yeah, well, the entire Springfield Road substation is underwater. Um, Still. So, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of water there. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite bad. <laughs> Um, so, the, so and, just, and uh, is Redcliffe where the um, old dump used to be, Deb, where, and round yeah, uh, yeah. past the Waihek Pa? Yep, that's exactly right. right. So that area was all flooded. I mean, and that river was in complete flood. Um, I think that's the Waihek Bridge there. I think that is gone. Um, 
gone. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. It's really hard to know 100% what is okay and what's not okay because, yeah, communication is difficult and some people are able to get on Facebook and some people are able to get onto email and internet and things like that and there's lots of information that might be right or might not be right and honestly civil defence information is, is hard to get good info as well. Oh, it's, listen, I, I think yeah. um, Hawke's Bay Civil Defence is not doing a great job from what I can see at the moment, just quietly from the outside. Well, no, you can say it loudly. We'd, we'd say it loudly too. We don't understand why um, at sort of midnight on Monday night someone wasn't knocking on Mayor Kirsten Wise's door with a satellite phone going, come on, baby, we're on. Mm. It seems like everyone was asleep. Thought we'd have a nice non eye mm. <laughs> No, um, the, uh, listen... Uh, this event, the one in Auckland and Mirawai throughout New Zealand, you're starting to wonder. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Now, mm -hmm. um, Deb, the other thing is future. Just so go, today Just is... Go. Just to go. You've got to go? No, no, no. We're getting through some traffic. Oh, good on you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> today is Thursday. Um, what's on... Just you're a normal family affected by this, but with a business and doing, as it turns out, an essential service as well. Um you, there will be a lot of stuff that will be spoiled, as you've just pointed out, that will need to be picked up yeah. and taken away because it represents a health well, danger as much as... taken away. Landfall's closed. Well, Landfall's that's just what closed. I was going to say. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. Well, I think um, if anyone who's listening, double bag and not everything that you can. Like, double bag it, put it somewhere in the coolest place on your property, like behind your garage or somewhere where it's cool, and just hold it there on site because... Um, Council services, council waste, curbside waste services are cancelled today and tomorrow and they may be cancelled on Monday as well. Um, we're getting, we're going to get some feedback on Monday as to whether or not the landfill will be open but it was completely flooded and all access to it was completely fl flooded and the um, route to the landfill is currently impassable. So they were having to go in there with a helicopter to check that. And as I understand it, the Weybridge is five metres away from where it's supposed to be and the kiosk was completely flooded. So what I would say to those politicians out there who are listening, so that's Stuart Nash, that's uh, uh, Anna Lork, um, for Hawke's Bay, please, can you tell the government to cut these waste taxes and ETS taxes on waste across the whole country from now until this mess is cleaned up. Because the last thing anyone needs is, um, you know, everyone needs to get rid so of... So let me get this right. So let me get this right. So yep. even though you're clearing up all that crap, you're going to be yep. charged to actually dump it. At. Massive tax. Oh, gosh, yes. Gosh, yes. So there's the normal waste charge per tonne at the landfill. From July 1st this year, there's going to be $106 of it is going to be taxed, and then there's going to be plus 15% on that GST. So we really, really would ask for the community, for this whole community, cut those taxes, just cut them, just take them off. They can take them off in an instant. Mm. So take them off, because it's all very well council going, okay, everyone, you can have free dumping, but it's not free. It's not free. There okay. is a per ton rate, and yeah. then of course, there's these jolly taxes. Just take the tax portion off, please. Please. No, fair, fair point. Um, and finally, I was just mm. thinking of people who are reliant upon electricity. Gee, I wouldn't like to have an electric car in Napier at the moment, would you? Well, it's worse than that. Um, we just heard from friends this morning that someone in Napier has a home dialysis unit and said they, you know, they desperately need oh, power. Yeah, They've yeah. been told, sorry, sorry. No power. There's an ambulance just coming through. So yeah, we're yeah, stuff going on. Um, so we we have a generator on route from Palmy at the moment, and um, we said to our friends, look, they can use use the generator for this dialysis because what they were told was, well, you'll have to buy a generator. Now there's one they said we haven't got the money to buy a generator because you're talking about around three grand um, minimum, and then the next thing is. Um, where are they going to get one? Yeah, There's yeah, not a generator yeah, to be yeah, found. Yeah. Like, might have been cleared out of every, like, gas, coal, anything, anything and everything. Um, so it is it is pretty dire here, but for medical things, like, 
I would just say, check your neighbours. Can please people just go check their neighbours? And if they're in that kind of situation and someone knows someone's got a generator, help them. Like, honestly, keeping your milk cold isn't important when it comes down to, like, living and dying, like, you know. Um, and really. finally, um, are you seeing the army at all? Um, we know that there are meant to be 900 personnel dispatched in your area. Have you, are they, are they con- Haven't seen them, but to be fair, we've kind of stayed hunkered down at home. Yeah. Our, our, where we live was an evacuation area. So we very kindly went and evacuated our parents yesterday morning um, or the day before. I don't even know what day it is. And then we... Well, no sooner got them to our place and we were having to be evacuated as well. So um, we actually made the decision to stay put. We went, well, we're too storied, roads are blocked, everything's crazy. We'll just head upstairs with the gas barbecue and the dog and mum and dad and some food and we should be right for a few days. But luckily, um, we didn't get to the point of being flooded just, just some water coming through the front door, that was it. <laughs> right. Um, but around you, you live in a low, low-lying low area, Jervoy Town, Miani Road, Miani, et cetera. Um, yeah. has that, was that completely flooded, Deb? No, no, it wasn't, um, especially not once that area breached at the Awatoto end of Hawke's Bay. So that's out by the coast. So for people, when they see that curve of the bay, if they've been on the Marine Parade and taken part in Art Deco um, events which are supposed to be happening this weekend but clearly won't be Mm. um yeah that sweep of the bay um the water had to go out there and then we had a high tide coming in and yeah so yeah water water went sideways and that's why tiawa and maranui ended up um getting a bit wet i imagine neil was hot on saying and that's why we don't want houses in that area because that's that's an area that's been targeted by Kanga Ora for a big housing development and I'm pretty sure um, that Neil Curtin is, is quite opposed to that for exactly this reason. Well, he was also uh, banging on about um, stop banks not being adequate for their purposes either, I have to say, Deb. And oh, no, no, no. I think that's a little unfair. You know, this is... That, look, those stop banks were well redone a while back and you know for the most part they did a good job this was a phenomenal amount of water I I mean I don't know I'm not an engineer but I can tell you when I was standing on the limestone path looking at that river flowing past like Hooker Falls I thought this feels nothing could save that pretty yeah pretty pretty bloody good that this is being contained within the stop bank at this point in time I was actually thinking of though the stop banks around um the electricity um, substation. Cause oh, yeah, well, that's, that's a little daft. I don't actually think there is even a stop bank there, to be honest, at that end. Well, you see, that's, <laughs> that's dreadful, isn't it? It's right beside a river, for Pete's sake. Yeah, it is right beside a river, yep. Um, and <sighs> I, the stop bank really sort of only starts on the other side of the bridge. Yep. And on the uh, opposite side, and this is what happened to the poor people in the Korakipo um, Lynx Road area by yep. the Waihak Golf Course there, they had no warning at all. So other friends of ours live there. They got up early in the morning, went downstairs and find themselves shin deep in water with their children asleep in bed downstairs and went, shoot, we've got to get out of here. And again, no warning for them. Um, And it all happened so fast that they ended up being rescued from their roof as well, I believe. Yep, that's the th- that those are the questions that will be asked afterwards. Um, Esk Valley yeah. seems to have been, in Bayview, but Esk Valley in particular, that borne the brunt in terms of tragedy. And yeah. that is an unfolding tragedy as we talk, Deb. It is. Um, are there, uh, what's the, the local view on that? Um, any more than what we just said now? No, I don't think so really. But there are sort of large pockets around the place in the community that actually just don't realise how quite how bad it is mm. because it hasn't affected them. So maybe aside from not having any power um, or having trouble getting the internet, um, they're not really affected, but um, yeah, the Esk Valley, it's, it's pretty bad. And I'd actually taken some photographs about of a whole heap of forestry slash on the side of the road just um, upriver from Esk Valley and had been going to send that through to the regional council and say, hey, come on, this is a, this is a problem waiting to happen, um, even with a small amount of flooding. Um, 
So, yeah, the, the trees and debris and mess that's washing up on the beach right now, it's, it's, we've got, New Zealand's got to do something about the oh, forestry yeah, issue. And, yeah, and, and it's not like we haven't known about it because Tairawhiti and the Gisborne area has been talking yeah. about it for the last three yeah. or four years, for heat's sake. Yeah. Um, yeah. And people have been killed, which sort of adds to that particular momentum. Um, Deborah, thank you so much. I wish you and Robert, um, your husband and the family, the best. I know you're going to be very, yeah, very we're, busy. We're all good. We're all good. We're fine. We feel so, so grateful that we're okay. But others others really are not. So um, I've, I've had some feedback from friends out of the area saying, what can they do? I know Henry O'Keefe over in Oh, Flaxmere. yeah, in Flaxmere. Yeah. He, he is desperate for clothing and bedding and pillows and food for the REC workers that have been evacuated oh, of course. over there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've actually put a post up on my personal Facebook about that. I think it's loaded. Um, so anyone in, in Hawke's Bay that can help there, that'd be great. Um, and I've got a girlfriend from Rotary in, in the South Island, actually, who said, what can we do? So I think, yeah, blankets, food, clothing, um sort of yeah clothing and, and linen stuff that would be that would be good and maybe local rotary if they're listening they'll they'll hook in with with south island rotary so deborah thank yeah. you um i'll if you don't no mind i'll catch we'll keep, go. keep in contact deb because i think you're making us aware and the rest of new zealand of exactly what you're confronting and will continue to confront for days and weeks yet to come thank you so much for your time Thanks, Michael. Thank okay. you so much. See you later. All right. Um, that's Deborah Burnside. Now, Deborah has been politically involved. You can see that she's pretty, pretty politically aware in the past. Um, but she has also been um, in his uh, child, children's book author, uh, award winning one, um, lives um, just outside Taradale, uh, affected as she, you would have heard from her. And she and her husband, Robert, they run a waste disposal company as well, a um, number of trucks. You know, the people go and pick up your rubbish? That's them, or that's their company. So it'll give you some indication of what's going in that place. Phil from Auckland says there's looting going on Hawks Bay at the moment. Believe me, there will be. Um, there will be. And, and you know, you'd almost say, Phil, um, and I would expect that in my role. I said yesterday on air, I do believe... I said that yesterday on air. I do believe that they will have law and order issues um, sooner rather than later. 